how you set me. How can I forget? How can I? How you brought me out? Brought me. Sunday morning, and he had a gravelly voice. He said, you know, beloved, sometimes I just think of all that God has done, he said. He said, and then I just start thanking him. And the memory of one thing brings up another one, and then I thank him for something else, and I, yeah, yeah. I just have a time of thanking him. Hallelujah. And you ought to try that. Yes, yes. Sometimes don't ask God for a thing. I just have a time of thanking him. And remembering all that he has done. If he never did another thing, yes, yes. we could spend the rest of our lives Hallelujah. just thanking him for what he's done. Isn't that so? Yes, yes. We'll never forget. Jesus, we thank you for how you've been at work in us, for us, through us. And may we remember all that you have done all that you have said. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you thank for you. bringing to our remembrance what Jesus taught. Grant that we may be filled with thanksgiving, adoration, and praise, and remembrance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I have just one announcement and then Bill Small will come and make a few others or highlight a few others. I want to remind you that it, it is our preference that you put your offering in the basket on the way in. We're not going to be passing the plate, uh, trying to cut down on uh, so much uh, contact in the context of worship if we can help it. And so we ask you to please place your offering in the basket in the um, in the narthex as you are coming in. If you should forget to do that, we're still not going to have the ushers come to your seat and bring you the basket. Anytime during the offertory, when the offertory is played, you may come and place it in the ba in the plate here in the front. But we would prefer uh, the basket uh, in the narthex as you enter. I want to remind you of a great 15-week mission course. It is called perspectives. It is reasonably priced at $265. Uh, if that uh, is a problem, we would like to work out something so that you may attend that 15-week course that is going to be held in Clarkston at the Clarkston International Bible Church that will begin on Tuesday night, August 10, and it will go for 15 Tuesday nights. It will end on my birthday, November the 16th, uh, which is a Tuesday this year. It is 15 weeks, 15 lessons, 15 different instructors. I am one of them. I'll teach one of the lessons, lesson seven, in September. But this is a great, great course, literally life-changing. And if you want to enhance your awareness of what God is up to globally, you want to enhance your awareness of mission and mission activity, especially as it relates to international movement of God, uh, then I urge you to look at the Perspectives course. We have some information about it. Susan Small is our local uh, Crossroads volunteer that is working with getting the course made known. 
and publicize. And if you'd like more information about perspectives, she has some uh, bookmarks that uh, give you all the details. But please consider very strongly taking that perspective course. You will not be disappointed. Bill Small. Good morning. Good morning. So I have a couple of things I want to remind you about. First, there's something exciting tonight. Can someone tell me what it is? VBS. VBS. So, announcement, all Crossroads families with elementary age children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and neighbors are encouraged to come tonight. It is from 5 to 7 o'clock. Registration starts at 445. There are a lot of activities. Tattoos, so if you need your tattoo updated, this is the time to get it done. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Balloon creation, magic tricks, parachutes. I have no idea what that's going to be like. Decorations, obstacle course, and of course, food. Trinity the Clown is going to be. Debbie Miller, who is an Olympian, is going to be here telling her story. So it's a great opportunity. Not only will there be all these activities and food, but there's also going to be information so that you can participate in other activities Monday and Tuesday night. So there's registration and more information on the church website, but don't miss this. This is your last uh, reminder to get out the word and come and have fun as a church family. So that's great. Uh, announcement about birthday offering results, the Dorcas Circle at the Presbyterian Women here at Crossroads. Thank you for your participation and support. The annual giving to the Presbyterian Women's annual birthday offering, they got $639.78, which I think is amazing. So uh, they wanted to send out their thank you for all the participation and all the support. Um, there is an announcement about an update with respect to our Sunday morning services next doors, or next, uh, excuse me, next week, next doors. I think I need more Diet Coke. Um, next week, next door, we're scheduled to have an outdoor uh, ceremony, uh, presuming that the weather cooperates. Remember, when we have outdoor services, it is at 10 o'clock instead of at 11 o'clock. And then July 11th, the next Sunday, is scheduled for indoors. Remember, if you're going to be part of the indoor service, um, you need to register with the church office and make sure your vaccination is up to date. So with that in mind, uh, time for our call to worship. So I'm going to ask you, if you're here with us in person, to stand as we prepare to worship God together. Come, let's give thanks to God together, for God is faithful and he is true. Let us worship God together. Let's stay standing for our opening
to follow Jesus. Let us come before God to confess and ask for his forgiveness. Our prayer of confession is in unison. O oh God, be merciful to us because your love is strong. Our sin has kept us far from you. Your wrath is justified. We try to make it on our own as if we are all we need until we find that we are all alone, wrapped up in pride and greed. We cry to you, O oh God, forgive and wash our sins away. For you forgive our sin, and when we return to you, O oh Lord, you give us joy again. Amen. Assurance of pardon is from Genesis the third chapter, the first seven verses. Even as Adam and Eve faced the consequences of their sin, our God prepared a way for them still to be connected to the earth and to the living presence of God. And so it is with all of us. In Christ's life, ministry, death, and resurrection, we are made able to persist upright and strong for our sins are forgiven and the people of God say thanks be to God amen and praise is the offer to God
been with us and we have been with him. we have as a congregation is to try to find ways to reach out to our community and provide the goods and services we think they might need. And sometimes that's a, an ongoing challenge to try to find what is it that, that the people would need and would respond to. One of our outreaches, which is really quite uh, successful in terms of reaching people who are not part of this faith community is our diabetes education outreach where people come here and get instruction from qualified people and some consultation as to how they can manage that dreaded disease. Vivette Jones and Sister Jean Russell are going to come and tell us more about that ministry. I don't think she'd be embarrassed for me to tell you that Jean Russell, come on, come, come, come ladies. That's just so sad. That's just, that's just, that's just sad. <laughs> I don't think Jean Russell would mind my telling you that she's 86 years old. The vet's a little older than she is, but, but anyway, Jean. Um, <laughs> Jean Russell is I tell her often, I want to be like her when I grow up. She is inquisitive. She's curious about the world in which she lives. 
She's energetic. She's not sitting at home. She, says, she always says, there'll be time. I said, why don't you sit down and take a rest? There'll be time enough for sitting down when I'm dead. <laughs> time enough for lying around when I'm dead. Uh, I am just grateful for the contribution of these ladies to our ministry and to all those who give themselves hundreds of hours of volunteer service in outreach and service to our community. Bless you, ladies. I'm going to read. Okay, good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. And I think I know my name. That's Vivette Jones. And Beryl Lindsay, Jean Russell, and I uh, basically make her part of the diabetes, uh, Crossroads Diabetes Ministry. Other members of our team who are not able to be here this morning are Margaret Kamalo, Faye Brown, and Janice Brown. Now, as many of you know, Crossroads has hosted a diabetes self-management program for the last several years. And we're here to remind members of the church and our community that although the in-person meetings have been suspended due to the pandemic, our program continues to serve. We have modified our program so that we can continue to meet the education needs of everyone and anyone seeking self-management information. We have done so via the telephone, electronic literature, and on several occasions, individual face-to-face -face consultations based on someone's need. If they're newly diagnosed and the need is urgent and they're confused, we'll meet them in the parking lot or find a room, or even I've gone to, and we've all, got, on different occasions, gone to a local McDonald's just to sit with someone. So. With that, um, studies have shown that people with chronic disease like diabetes are more susceptible to complications from COVID. With that in mind, we're more keen than ever to remain both accessible and available to those who need us. Our ministry is therefore asking for your support in spreading the awareness of our program. Our contact number is 770-689-2474. Uh, you will be asked to leave a message when you call. You get a prompt for message, and we will retrieve the message and return your call. So no one's there manning the phone. However, no call will be ignored. And speaking of support, we have some books here um, that will come up shortly, but we have some examples here. And I'd just like to say on behalf of Crossroads Church family and the diabetes ministry in particular, I would like to express a heartfelt thank you to White Oak Hills Baptist Church for their very generous gift of three dozen extremely elegant book, and I know I'm going on about it, elegant books rather. We seem to be making, an, uh, whoops. making a lot of drama about the books themselves, but they're packed with information and they're very helpful to those who really need to manage their diet um, to basically facilitate the diabetes um, management. And so we're very, very grateful to White Oak Hills Back to Church for that. And with that, Jean, would you like to continue? Good morning again, Crossroad. I am just going to give you a brief introduction to the books that we have received. These books are indeed beautiful and are all approved by the American Diabetes Association. In fact, many of them were commissioned by that organization. Each recipe is broken down into caloric and other nutritional values, relevant to a healthy diet. We are humbled at the thoughtfulness of this sketcher in support of our ministry. Without doubt, future attendees of our program will also be blessed by this wonderful gift. Members of our congregation who have or who know someone dealing with diabetes are invited to share in our bounty. However, please be mindful that these books have been created to make a real difference in the life of someone living with diabetes. So, if you are unlikely to put the book to use, please allow it to be given to someone who will. 
Again, our sincere thanks to our brothers and sisters of White Oak Hill Baptist Church. Thank, Thank you, you Crossroads. I save. Well, you gotta tell me once. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, that drummer is married to Vivette Jones. <laughs> Without losing your joy and your laughter, we go to prayer. I sometimes find myself going to prayer from a posture of laughter. I think about all that's happening in the world and I think about the joy that I have even as I face sometimes dark times and dark situations. But I'm filled with this outrageous joy because I am God's child and I am in a relationship with the beloved and with the creator. And it gives me a whole different perspective on life. In fact, when people say, how you doing? My standard answer is, I'm peachy. I'm just fine. I said that at the airport recently and the TSA person said, how are you? I said, I'm peachy. Peachy? I said, yes, I'm, I'm a Georgia peach. I'm, I'm just having a great life and a great time. And sometimes when we go to prayer, we ought to remember that. Life, life is good. The, the worst, the person with the worst situation here is still better off than two-thirds of the world. The, the person with the, the most problems in this room is still better off than two-thirds of the world. We ought to remember that. And come to prayer with a great sense of joy that God is in his heaven and all is going to be well, and in a certain sense, all is well. We come appealing to our God who hears us when we pray. We are praying for Audrey Godfrey, Mark Brown, who is here, Dorothy Johnson, who is here, um, Michael Hairston, Shronda Blake, Alberta Settles, whose son is here, Isaac Wood, Rosa Crowley and Dora Crowley, Lena Daniels, whose daughter is here, uh, Adlin Fuller Aparanta, Faye Brown's brother, we've got to get his name so we don't call him by as Faye Brown's brother, Ben Wilkinson Jr., Irving Simpson, uh, Irving Simon rather, uh, Dean Wanless, John Jankuski, who is here, John Gregory, Jasmine, Edward and Yuvalin Patterson, Doreen Wanless. We continue to pray for those who are doing their grief work, Dolores Rose and Michael Hairston and his family. Let us pray. Thank you, O oh God, our Father, for a good day. For a good life. For good mood. For good circumstances. We still have some needs. We still have some requests we lay before you. We still have some circumstances that need to be rectified, worked out. We have some wrongs that need to be righted. We have some burdens that we need lifted. Yet, we simply want to start off by saying thank you for this good day and this good life. And with joy and even some hilarity, we 
come before you. We are cheerful. We are full of the delight and the joy that you plant in the hearts of believers. We thank you for the things that have made us smile and laugh this week. For children, for pets that did something silly that made us smile, for friends that said something funny, for those who lightened our day with their stories, their hugs, their care for us. We thank you for the joy you bring to us many times through other people. We thank you. We would pray today for these whose names have been called. We would also remember the 156 people unaccounted for in Surfside, Florida, for the families of those who perished in that awful collapse of a building, for those who were injured, for those who are now displaced and homeless. We pray for the first responders as they continue to dig through the rubble, looking for survivors, victims. We pray that you would grant mercy and comfort to those affected by this. We would pray for our colleagues in mission, especially those whom we support here through our mission giving. We pray your continued strength be given to them as they do their work. Some of them are underfunded. Pray that you'd continue to send financial support their way. Some are simply burned out and tired in their ministries. We pray that you would encourage them and build them up and strengthen them on every level, at every turn. We pray for the ministries of this church and thank you that we are having good ministry. Thank you for the new people you are sending our way. Thank you for the new opportunities we have to make a difference, to touch a life. Pray that you continue to show us your ways, O oh God that we might minister with strength and excellence and passion. We pray for our upcoming Vacation Bible School beginning tonight. Pray that you'd send the children back that we missed serving last summer. And help us to share with them the genuine joy of Jesus. We pray for the workers who will minister to these pray that you would be glorified by what we offer what we do thank you for this privilege of being on this corner of being your church your people teach us how to be representatives of Jesus 24 7 take from us this horrible practice of putting Jesus on on Sunday and laying him down on Monday. Teach us to walk with him all day long, to declare him all day long, to represent him in Publix and in CVS and as we drive and as we're talking with our neighbors and our co-workers. Grant us a Christly demeanor we pray that when you look on us, you might be pleased. We pray for the United States of America, for her leaders. We 
pray for decision makers at the highest levels of our government, for our president and vice president and their cabinet, for our senators and representatives, for the governor of this state, we pray, for the mayor of this city of Atlanta, we pray, and indeed every city around it. We need you, O oh God. Every hour we need thee, and we cannot do anything significant apart from you, apart from your strength, apart from your power. So reign in us, reign over us, we pray, and find in us, O oh holy God, no resistance. Pray now for this week that is coming. We know not what it holds. We only know that you are in your heaven. You are at work, reigning over us, seeing everything we do, hearing everything we say. And we know that you will guide us this week. As we hear your voice, may we say yes. We say yes to your will, yes to your holy way. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes. Lord, yes, I will trust you. And when your spirit speaks to me, when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Lord, yes. I'll say yes, I'll say yes, Lord, I will trust you and obey, when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Amen. You have already given your offering, but if you're able, would you please stand and let us speak to God and thank him for the privilege of giving. I'll ask you to please hold up anything that represents your giving and offering, perhaps your Bible, perhaps your checkbook, perhaps your wallet, perhaps your open hand, but it is your way of saying to God, I thank you for what you have given. And I thank you for the privilege of giving back to you a portion of that which you've given to me. Let us pray together. God the giver, we thank you for these resources you have entrusted to us. As we give, we do so with grateful hearts. With cheerfulness, we return a portion of your gifts that Crossroads Church may care for the financially distressed. Spread the gospel to the nations. Address economic and political injustices. Create and sustain ministries that develop disciples of Jesus the Christ. As we give, we pray that you, holy God, will teach us how to give. May our motives be pure, our hearts be glad, and our hands be open. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As the offertory is uh, played, uh, please just simply be reflective as we consider the privilege of giving. Hey, hey, hey. 
much you've given to us and so father we pray that with what we give back to you that you would be glorified that you would be honored that these gifts and ties and offerings would be used in ministry and to glorify you and that in the process we would be changed as we give to be made more like you and we pray this in confidence in Jesus name amen, amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the Word of God, which today comes from the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, chapter 2, that uh, NT in parentheses after 3, 1 to 3 is a stray mark. That shouldn't be there. I'm sorry. I didn't catch that in the draft. Uh, it's not a New Testament passage. Two passages from Genesis, Genesis 2 and then the first three verses of Genesis 3. I'm going to read from the New King James Version of the Scriptures, Genesis 2, 15 through 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said... You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the servant, serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, musicians. I didn't even know Paul Settles owned a tie. <laughs> so, no, 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 I lost so. 10 pounds, and I was able to wear this suit for the first time. I said, I'm wearing it at the Crossroads today. So this is my celebration suit. So. You make me sorry I pick on you. <laughs> it's all good. You know I love you. <laughs> Father, thank you for your word and for access to it and for the privilege of studying it. We give you praise. 
Thank you for laughter, for each other, for insight, for minds that are alive and working, for the ability to think, to be reflective, to contemplate, to sort out, to apply, to ruminate. We give you thanks. Now open to us thy word, we pray, and may we who hear it and receive it be changed thereby. Amen. Amen. For the next few messages, I want to explore the concept of touch. I've been reading a book. I actually just read a review of the book in a magazine, and it sounded interesting. So I immediately ordered the book, downloaded the book onto Kindle, and started reading it. And I've been reading it off and on, not straight through, but over the last weeks. A book called Handle with Care. Uh, the subtitle has to do with our exploring touch in the body of Christ. And it is by Laurie Ferguson Wilbert, and I'll quote her a number of times in this message and in the subsequent messages about touch. I want to talk today about the garden touch. Some of the first words we humans hear are words of prohibition. Well, you heard them. I, I was a model child, so I, I was never, you know, I was never told, no, 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 that's not true. You remember those prohibitions wrapped up in a one or two word warning? Hot. Careful. No. Don't touch. In the opening chapters of Genesis, we see touch experienced for the first time through the eyes of the first humans. Adam and Eve have been in the garden, touching vegetation, I'm sure of it, touching animals, and, quiet as it's kept, touching each other. Now, for the first time, it is not good to touch, or so says Eve, actually, God did not prohibit the touching of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God forbade the eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Did you see it in the text? Be very careful. We have sometimes said that God said such and such a thing when God did not say that. Look at verse 17 of Genesis 2. This is God speaking. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. In fact, the text doesn't say so, but I'm guessing that God encouraged Adam and Eve to touch the stuff around them to enjoy the garden through their senses. Smell the flowers. Touch the animals. Look closely at the sky. Hear the sounds of every winged bird and every creeping thing. Taste the green herbs and taste the fruit that hangs from the verdant trees. I'm sure they were not only permitted to but encouraged to enjoy Eden. The specific prohibition God gave to Adam had to do with one tree. And when Eve repeated the prohibition to the servant, she added the word touch. But God never said, don't touch the tree. He said, don't eat of the fruit of that tree. I would imagine they were perfectly free to stroke the bark of the tree, feel the leaves, 
just not supposed to eat of the fruit of that tree. Eve added the word touch to the prohibition. Remember what we just read in 2.17. Now when the serpent challenges her, Eve says, this, this is the way she remembers it. And the woman said to the serpent, this is in chapter 3, verse 2, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. She got that part right. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, that is the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it. God never said that part. She embellishes. Listen, by the way, what God says is what God says. And what God says is good enough. You don't need to add, you don't need to help God out. Well, in other words, you don't need to use other words. Say what he said. You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, Eve says to the serpent, lest you die. And by the way, when she says, lest you die, that phrase implies we might die. She's even mishandling what God said. When God said it, he said, this is in 217, you will die. You will surely die. She says, uh, God told us uh, not to eat it uh, and not touch it and we, we might die. You, Eve, you need to say what God said. God had permitted touch, perhaps even encouraged it. He certainly did not prohibit touch in the garden. And from this addition to the divine pronouncement and directive until now, we have misconstrued what God has said about touch. The same God who came to us in a body created us to inhabit the body and to interact with the world he made through that body, through touch. Touch is a privilege and I dare say an assignment. I'll get to this in another message, but did you know you're supposed to actually greet each other with touching? According to Eve, God said, don't touch that tree. However, God said, of that tree you shall not eat. There's a huge difference between those two statements. In his novel, Angle of Repose, Wallace Stengel wrote, touch. It is touch that is the deadliest enemy of chastity, loyalty, monogamy, gentility with its codes and conventions and restraints. By touch, we are betrayed and betray others. An accidental brushing of shoulders or touching of hands, hands laid on shoulders in a gesture of comfort that lies like a thief that took, not gave, that wanted, not offered, that awoke, not pacified. When one flesh is waiting, there is electricity in the merest contact. That's a good line. When one flesh is waiting, there is electricity in the merest contact. It is true, touch can be deadly. It is true that there is electricity in the merest contact. It is also true that God created us to enjoy his world and each other, partly through touch. Lori Ferguson Wilbert, in her book, Handle with Care, comments on that quote by Wallace Steg Stegner, there is electricity in the mirror's contact, and Lori writes, most of us have felt this electricity in contact with another's flesh, but because touch is so uncommon in our culture and in the church, we immediately associate the electricity we feel with illicit touch instead of ministering touch. We assume that if we feel felt, or if we have felt others, then it must be wrong. We suspect sinful motives in others, or we fear 
our own sinful motives. And that fear leads us to instate rules around touch. And then Lori Ferguson Wilbert mentions some rules, and I've added some that I've heard or observed. There shall be no forward-facing hugs with members of the opposite sex. There shall be a maximum of three pats on the back of a person of the same gender. Children shall be hugged from the side. If a person is very attractive, that person shall not be hugged at all. <laughs> if a person is unkempt, that person shall be greeted at arm's length, no touching at all. If a person is frail and wrinkled, they shall not be touched. Remember the Me Too movement? We better play it safe and not touch anybody. That's the safest thing. Now, I agree we should be careful not to have our expressions of affection misinterpreted. I, I agree. But the garden touch is a pure touch. Eden is called elsewhere the garden of God. And the touching that goes on in Eden is a pure touching. Eve, God never told you you couldn't touch. In fact, the God who created you and created the garden has given you freedom to touch Adam and the animals and the vegetation. Enjoy what God has made. Ah, Eden. It is the place where God, according to Genesis 2.9, made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Can't you picture Adam and Eve? Be before sin entered the world and they became aware of their brokenness, I, I am sure that, that the text doesn't tell us this, but I, I'm sure they went around the garden Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, it was paradise. And I'm sure they were touching. I'm sure they weren't. Oh, that's interesting. I, I'm sure they were. It, it was discovery and adventure at every turn. Eden was a sensory paradise. There was so much to smell, to hear, to taste, to see, to touch the late Warren Wearsby, commenting on this passage in Genesis 2, said that a ruler can only rule others if he can rule himself. So it was necessary for Adam to be tempted. God was trying to see if he could control himself. Proverbs 25, 28, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Here are two people who are given the freedom to obey the God who created them and placed them in paradise. And they had the task and the privilege of interacting with the created order through touch. However, to make paradise work, Adam and Eve had to rule themselves. They did not succeed at that. They were given but one exemption, one boundary, one prohibition. And we do not know the why of the prohibition. I, I tried to find out why God restricted them. Why did he tell them you can enjoy all this except there's one tree whose fruit I don't want you to eat. I want to know why. There's no answer. But let's remind ourselves of the setting. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. So says verse 15 of chapter 2. And you remember the freedom given of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Why is it that with all of that freedom, all they could think about was the prohibition? I, I don't know, but, but we know what that's like. Because if you're told you can have everything here except this, you start concentrating on the this. 
welcome to my house. You can go in every room, but I ask you just simply not to go behind that door. Then you want to know what is behind that door. It's the way we are wired. I want to suggest that one of the many ways we might respond to God and to his commands regarding earth keeping is that we learn about and practice appropriate touch. We hear the prohibitions, but I, I want to call appropriate touch the garden touch. That is, we touch as if we've been given freedom to enjoy all things, and we touch fully cognizant of the presence of our creator in our setting, in our circumstances, seeing everything we do, hearing everything we say. And the people and the objects we touch, we touch carefully, respectfully, lovingly, sensitively. I heard a line, I read a line uh, this week in preparation, and it's a great line. I'd never heard it before, but it's a, it's a nice little uh, line. You alone are responsible for you alone. <laughs> you alone are responsible for you alone. I have to remember that. All this that God has given, all this freedom you have, now be careful. Do what God said and hear his voice instructing you, guiding you, and yes, in some areas, even restricting you. This past week, John McAfee was found dead in a prison cell in Barcelona, Spain. Authorities su suspect that McAfee took his own life. John McAfee is best remembered for developing in 1987 the McAfee antivirus software, which I don't need because I have a Macintosh <laughs> laptop and we don't get viruses. Thank you very much. McAfee Total Protection software offers antivirus piracy, identity protection tools. It is a defense against malware. Malware being a shortened uh, version of the phrase malicious software. The McAfee software protects against malware, ransomware, and spyware. In Eden, God gave to Adam and Eve all the protection they would need from the malware of the serpent. From the evil one who was trying to install malware on their operating systems. They only had to obey and continue enjoying the sensory paradise called Eden in order to know the fullness of what God had for them. They only had to engage the creation through their senses, but they opened themselves to inappropriate downloads into their spirits. Let's get back to Eden and learn how to freely touch and be touched. I, I cannot tell you how important this is to me. I, I share with you uh, often um, about my relationship and my interaction with my son, with my wife, and with my mother and my uh, significant others in my life. My wife says that when my twin sister and I see each other, and I'll see her later today, she's going to be here for vacation Bible school this evening. My wife says that when my twin and I greet each other. We act like we haven't seen each other for years. And she's right. It's, it's always emotional. I don't, I don't know why that is, and I'm not trying to fix that. I enjoy hugging my sister. I am never going to be the guy who says, what, what? I, I'm never doing that. C come over here. I, I want some interaction. Always appropriate, always genuine, but always there. I'm, I'm going to be a hugger until I die. I'm going to be a hugger. I'm going to be a toucher. Always appropriate. Always aware of what God has called me to. But I'm, I'm not going to try to avoid 
touching because I think that's one of the premier ways we engage God's creation, things and people. Touching. One of the reasons some people don't like to shop online is because they say, I, I know I could get it through Amazon, but I, I want to go to a store because I want to see it and I want to touch it. I, I, know, I, can, I know I can get it online, sight unseen, but I want to, I want to engage it. I want to listen to the sounds of that gadget. Let us rejoice that God sees us and has sent us one who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities, who sat with beggars, who sat with sinners, who engaged them, who had his disciples lay on his chest at Passover. I'm going to explore that text in a subsequent sermon in this series. I want to argue that tactile engagement with God's creation, which includes objects and people, are one of the privileges that God has given to us. I close with a story uh, that a missionary friend of mine told me, and it made me so sad. He had two children at the time. His five-year-old daughter uh, was just his delight. He had a son and a daughter, and he loved his daughter. She was about five years old, and she was sitting on his lap one day, and they, he was kissing her, and, and they were just enjoying uh, each other and enjoying a daddy and daughter moment. And then she, out of the clear blue, said, Daddy, I sure hope you don't touch me inappropriately. And he said, honey, where did, you, where did you get that? And she said, that's something they told us at school. And he said, he told, he told me this. He said, at that moment, I knew it was over. I knew I could no longer have her sit on my lap and relate to her in that wonderful way that we had enjoyed because she had been now spoiled and something had been planted into her head where she was now going to interpret every touch possibly as inappropriate. And he said from that day on, he said, I, I rarely have initiated having her sit on my lap. If she comes and wants to sit on my lap, I don't turn her away, but I don't, I don't grab her and put her on my lap because she has heard. And, and I appreciate schools that teach our children, you know, if, if anyone does something inappropriately, uh, touches you in private parts, you report that. Uh, that's appropriate and that's right. But how sad that the good touch and the pure touch is now completely off, off the table, off limits. We gotta figure this out. I, I wish we could go back to Eden because pre-fall, there was no being naked and being ashamed. It was being naked and unashamed. And they enjoyed each other's bodies and they enjoyed the animals and they enjoyed the vegetation and they enjoyed all that was in Eden. Now let's see if we can restore the garden touch. Let's see if we can get back to the place where we enjoy all that God has given without ever being inappropriate in our enjoyment thereof. Eve, God didn't say what you said he said. In fact, God told you to enjoy everything you see except this one fruit. Now, Eve, stop majoring on the prohibition and enjoy the privilege of touching everything around you. Let us pray. Oh God, restore the garden touch in us that we may enjoy your world through our senses. May we express gratitude for that which you've given and enjoy the hands-on opportunities you have by your grace given us. Sensitize us, oh God, that where appropriate we may keep our hands to ourselves. At the same time, may we enjoy your grand, beautiful, luscious world 
in the name of Jesus, who is fairer than the lilies, who is the fragrant rose of Sharon, and who is the one we've tasted and seen and touched, we pray. Just before we end our service today and sing one closing song, perhaps you're here in our sanctuary or you're watching us online and you'd have to say, Pastor Farmer, I was touched inappropriately in my past and it's very difficult for me to hear this message Because for me, touching is just not something I enjoy, something I can't do and I can't even receive. Would you allow the Lord who came to the earth to minister to you, to touch you? Would you allow Jesus in all his pure love to come into your life? correcting those things which have been made distasteful by the actions of some others would you allow him to come in and restore to you that which you should enjoy by creation would you allow him to come in and make the wrongs right make the dark places light again would you say right there where you are sitting right there as you're watching this right there where you sit in this sanctuary would you just simply pray a simple prayer oh Lord Jesus you came to the earth to touch broken humanity I am broken. Touch me, O oh Lord. I open my heart and my life to you. I receive your loving, gracious touch, your forgiveness of my sin. I renounce evil and I embrace you, Lord Christ. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you please see me as soon as possible, right after this service? Or would you please contact our church office? I'd love to chat with you. Let us rejoice that indeed God continues to touch us in the Christ and through each other. If you're able, would you please stand as we sing our closing song. Amen.
touched me. Always a oh, he touched me. All the joy. And all the joy that was before. Something happened. Something happened. And now I know he touched me. And made me whole. Would you please look up and receive the benediction? And now, beloved. Go from this place rejoicing that God has touched you and you have the privilege of touching each other. May your hugs be downright therapeutic. May you find yourselves rejoicing that we have each other. God has given us to each other. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. And all week long, May you experience the hugs of the holy. Amen. Amen.
everywhere I look, everywhere I look, your love is all around. 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 All around. All around. Yeah. All around. Everywhere I look, your love is all around. 